Froelich Gladstone Rainey was an American anthropologist. A master of narrative prose, he was the type of ancient specialist anyone in the field would have relished working with. Regarding the Arctic, he put it to the National History Museum as follows, quote, We have now found an Arctic metropolis, many times larger than anything previously thought possible in this part of the world, and once inhabited by a people whose material culture differed markedly from that of the Eskimos as we know them. He continues, One morning in the June of 1940, when Magnus Markey and I had returned to begin the second season of digging at Iputak, we soon became aware of the astonishing extent of these ruins. We could see long avenues of yellow squares, marking the ancient buildings, spanning east and west for well over a mile. Over the next several days, we hurriedly attempted to chart these ruins before they all became hidden once more. We eventually realized that more than 600 buildings would have once stood on this ancient site, a site well over a mile in length." End quote. Dated at many thousands of years old, you have to wonder, why is not more publicity shared regarding these mysterious people? One of the most striking facts regarding their artifacts was the high standard of craftsmanship. Sophisticated objects have been unearthed which demonstrate a far more complex civilization than the proto-Eskimo culture academia would have you believe inhabited the area. The architectural abilities of this mysterious group also far exceeds the capabilities of other ancient cultures, even as far as Mexico. The largest ancient settlement ever found to have existed in Alaska, it was even bigger than any Arctic coastal village in Alaska or Canada today. The town of Iputak, would have once been home to more than 8,000 people. Just who were the Iputak people? How did they survive so successfully within an Arctic climate many thousands of years ago? Are we looking at a culture far older than we are told? Regardless, one reason to conceal such a fact would be the Bering Strait hypothesis, a hypothesis conveniently crucial to evolution theory, and one which numerous people have lost their careers over. Dr. Scott Elias at the Colorado Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research, as far as orthodox scholarship is concerned, the validity of the Bering Land Bridge route is not up for debate. Regardless of such cult rhetoric, the Iputak people are certainly an interesting and controversial bunch and worthy of future study. We will keep you posted. In 1910, construction workers in Mexico were building an insane asylum atop of what they presumed was an ordinary mountain. Upon digging into the earth, they almost immediately discovered the ruins of an extremely ancient structure. It was later realized, yet not largely shared with the world, that the hill is actually what is now classified as the largest pyramid on earth. Hiding under the grass, trees and many tons of earth sits the once lost and now found Great Pyramid of Cholula. With a base four times the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza, just how did this amazing monument get lost to time? Also, why is it more heard regarding this enormous structure within modern academia? It sits just outside Puebla, the fourth largest city in modern-day Mexico. It is 450 meters wide and 66 meters tall, with a floor area comparable in size to nine Olympic-sized swimming pools. Not only is this structure the largest pyramid on Earth, but it is also officially and undeniably deemed the largest monument ever built on our planet. In 1519, Hernán Cortés, a Spanish invader, had his men march into the great Aztec city of Cholulu. They subsequently massacred 10% of the population and built a tiny church on top of the hill as a symbol of their conquest. The church they built is now known as the oldest continuously occupied building in North America. Historical records suggest that when Cortes arrived in Cholula, the pyramid was many thousands of years old and already entirely overgrown by vegetation. Additional legends state that the Great Pyramid was so sacred to the Cholula people that they covered it with soil in order to hide it from Cortes's army. We may never know how it became buried under the sediment it now rests beneath. Experts believe the pyramid grew in stages, successive civilizations improving on what had already been built. When an old pathway was removed in 2013 to make access for a drainage system, workers reportedly uncovered at least 63 complete and very ancient skeletons. 
some of these remains accompanied by numerous alien-looking skulls absent their skeletons. Ancient myths from the region told of giants building the structure, with the city's inhabitants being of normal size. From the 1930s until today, great efforts have been made to fully excavate the pyramid, although these excavations rarely gain any media attention. Regardless of the pyramid's enormous size and possible importance, over five miles of tunnels have been dug inside the structure, all open to the public if you can get in them, as locals have reportedly reclaimed the pyramid as their own. Even though extensive exploratory research has been undertaken, the age or indeed the possible builders remain an elusive mystery. Just what type of tombs could still be buried beneath the largest officially classified pyramid on Earth? Were alien remains really found amongst the ruins? And if they were, why was the world kept in the dark regarding the results of this testing? Official reports released at a much later date concluded that they were the decapitated skulls of deformed children. This conclusion, however, just raises more questions. We will keep you posted on further information discovered regarding the site. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. There are many curious things found throughout recent years found within images taken by Google Earth, with some being particularly peculiar. One such find being that of a seemingly frozen ship measured at 400 feet long, it is as if it were picked up and planted upon this enormous block of frozen ice within Antarctica. Dismissed by some as simply being that of a naturally formed block of ice, yet the resemblance to a cruise liner is unquestionably uncanny. If indeed a ship like the one we have covered previously, an old lifeboat found in the 70s within an inescapable lagoon within the interior of Bouvie Island one of the most inhospitable and remote places on Earth, ravaged almost yearly by storms, with no explanation as to how it arrived there. this ship would undoubtedly raise similar questions. Some conspiracy theorists even putting forward the posit that it is possibly the remnants of a Nazi vehicle, a theory linked to a base long claimed to have been created down here during the Second World War. Whatever the answer, questions regarding this curious find remain. Could this really be a ship literally frozen solid in an almost impossible location? And if so, where did it come from, and how did it get to where it rests now? We find this discovery highly compelling. During the last few years, reports have begun to circulate regarding a joint team of American and European explorers in the Antarctic. Around 20 kilometers across the Antarctic border, this team of non-governmental explorers actually confirmed the existence of a set of three ancient stone block pyramids peering out from beyond the shrinking ice. The preliminary finding was even published in the press, yet all subsequent information on the find has been silenced. Possible aerial photographs of the location may have been leaked, as there are some very compelling images of pyramidal ruins in Antarctica now circulating the web. American and European governments have attempted to shrug off the accusations as absurd. However, as more and more specialists are converted by substantial evidence within Egypt as to the sheer age of the Sphinx and pyramids, many researchers now conclude that these huge ancient structures found around the world were most likely built prior to the last ice age. Additionally, fossilized ancient palm tree pollen has been found in numerous sites within Antarctica, confirming it was once much warmer than it is today, making it highly possible that past civilizations did indeed inhabit this now frozen continent. The Pyre Rees map is another compelling piece of artifactual evidence to suggest that past cultures had an intimate knowledge of the Antarctic coast before it was coated in ice. A map built from the vast ancient literature once housed and subsequently destroyed in the wrecking of Alexandria's library, knowledge which could have proved the existence of this past culture. Ancient pyramidal sites dot every continent of Earth. The only continent governments strongly deny the existence of any ancient ruins whatsoever is Antarctica. Just what are they hiding in Antarctica? 
There just happens to have been some very strange visitations to the Antarctic as of late. In the past year alone, countless top officials from Russia, America, religious groups, and other official bodies from around the world have been quietly visiting the continent in succession, with no substantial reasons for their visits being given. Have they found an ancient city perfectly preserved in the ice? Maybe an ancient advanced technology, maybe even a stargate. The question is, will we ever be told? If we could prove beyond doubt that our continued posit of an ancient, once highly advanced yet pre-Ice Age civilization once existing here on our planet, we would literally have to rewrite our understandings of antiquity. We have covered numerous sites, found submerged all around the world. Yet, unfortunately, due to their proximity to islands and the continental regions they are found amongst, many are dismissed as merely being 5 to 10,000 year old ruins, fitting with modern paradigm and, alas, avoiding controversy or the questions which inevitably follow. Yet, our next side of interest may turn out to not only be that most important of submerged ruins ever found on Earth but the smoking gun previously mentioned. On the 19th of May 2001, India's Union Minister for the Science and Technology Division, Murli Manohar Joshi, announced that the ruins of an ancient civilization had been discovered off the coast of Gujarat, in the Gulf of Kambahat. The site was discovered by INOT, National Institute for Ocean Technology. Using sonar, the discovered ruin is now being strongly argued as definitively pre-Ice Age, yet also advanced in nature. NIOT went on to describe an area of regularly spaced artificial structures. Located 20 kilometers from the Gujarat coast and spans 9 kilometers, Joshi claims the site as an urban settlement that predates the Indus Valley Civilization. Further descriptions of the site by Joshi describe it as containing regularly spaced dwellings, a granary, a bath, a citadel, and a drainage system. According to Wiki, quote, the structures and artifacts discovered by NIOT are the subject of contention. The major disputes surrounding the Gulf of Combat cultural complex are claims about the existence of submerged city-like structures, the difficulty associating dated artifacts with the site itself, and disputes about whether stone artifacts recovered at the site are actually geofacts or artifacts. One major complaint is that artifacts at the site were recovered by dredging, instead of being recovered during a controlled archaeological excavation." End quote. Simply put, due to the fact that it has not been excavated properly, and we predict probably never will, academia are dismissing this ancient city as simply unconfirmed. We feel a quite ridiculous position to take despite NIOT's supporting data of its existence due to its accidental discovery, presumably via dredging. We find the marine archaeology in the Gulf of Kambat highly compelling. Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome back. There is an old adage which states, a history unknown has a habit of repeating itself. As such, we will continue to provide reruns of hand-picked content repeating on MH2. A link can be found in the description. 
For instead of avoiding an inevitability, we continue to add reinforcement to the arguments in regards to whether man experienced this, and if so, how advanced were they, and most importantly, who? Passionately believing, with a continual mounting mountain of supporting anomalies and direct contradictions to mainstream paradigm. A historical correction, for to possibly avoid such an event again, we all must work unrelentingly to unravel the existence of these past mysteries of history, to know where we came from. The beliefs, technologies, age, and chronology of at least four lost civilizations we feel have been identified yet alas, regardless of whether there were four, more, or just one now lost civilization. The mystery remains regarding the sudden causes of their eventual demise. To expand our knowledge of not only world history, but to answer the question of the ages, where did we come from? Our work, our mission, our endeavor here on Mystery History is to expose smoking guns of conspiracy, the artifacts, ruins, megaliths, and other ancient high technologies which were all conveniently ignored by those who tow, or rather make a living, from the funding of mainstream historical paradigms. The undeniable evidence of a once highly capable group or groups accomplished incredible feats of ancient architectural, engineering, advanced metallurgy, and so on. Baffling, often far too advanced, and as such, out-of-place artifacts, and the, as we perceive, overwhelming evidence for once existing yet now lost civilizations. Furthermore, the exposure of the additionally yet equally abundant evidence for these multiple groups having experienced some abrupt, sudden extinction, vanishing amidst their workings, seemingly in an instant, yet were, we feel, displayed incredible capability and were, at the time of these vanishing acts, in a position of apparent flourishment. Polygonal joinery, gigantic megalithic building blocks, singing 1,000-plus ton statues, specifically of Memnon, the pregnant woman of Lebanon, also north of the 1,000 tons mark, the east wing megaliths of Cheops, and Yangshan Quarry was also seemingly abandoned in an instant, had a stone that was busily being liberated from Earth's bedrock, is estimated to weigh over 16,000 ton. We suspect these huge stones and subsequent efforts in movement and placement were all deliberately motivated to not only show prowess and power, but also to leave a lasting reminder upon our planet, one to indicate their past existence. Footprints on coal, iron, and zinc pots found in or blown from multi-million-year-old strata, many found yet subsequently quote, lost over the years are all indications to support our posit here upon our channel. Many questions remain unanswered. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered the astonishing discovery solely made by Dr. Sam Osmanagat within Bosnia, long thought to have merely been a hill completely overgrown and neglected, with many locals even building upon and farming its inclines. Dr. Osmanagat, however, after studying the geology of the area, realized the reason for precise angles of this supposed natural formation, eventually confirming that it was indeed an enormous ancient pyramid. One that, after long, arduous research, has been found to rival even those of Giza. Indeed, even its plateau, especially if one takes into consideration the following expose. Regardless of constant mockery, objections, resistance, and dismissal he has predictably experienced from mainstream-funded academia, Dr. Osmanagat has not only unearthed vast portions of this ancient structure, proving beyond doubt that it was indeed an ancient pyramid. 
but has also successfully penetrated its inner sanctum, along with many other highly intriguing ancient sites located within the local vicinity. All littered with stones that seemingly give off resonance frequencies that are not only being ignored by mainstream scientists, but baffling all those who valiantly decide to explore their features. Yet, thanks to Jock and Sam's continued efforts, our understandings of the incomprehensible, astonishingly true scale of this site has increased dramatically, and indeed the feat that whoever built it went through in constructing the site, truly unbelievable. Jock spent 16 months as official videographer for the Archaeological Park Foundation, a Bosnian NGO non-profit organization created by Dr. Sam Osmanagat, during which, and thanks to the considerable effort of hundreds of volunteers who since 2010 have been involved in the backbreaking excavations of the site, clearing many tons of rock and earth from the area, including the Ravni tunnels, such tunnels are apparently widely known locally for their healing powers, which upon investigation Many alternative investigators have recorded unusual bioelectromagnetic energy levels within. Yet, Jock and Sam's most recent personal discoveries is the connection of these tunnels, located a fair distance from the pyramid itself, interwoven with all the local ancient sites, a result clearly intended by the past intelligence responsible for their creation. These tunnels backfilled 4,600 years ago for reasons that many have postulated, was done to avoid further degeneration of the original civilization's work. Thus, we're clearly a conservation effort that, just like I have postulated on several other videos, are the purpose for the casing stones, which can still be found upon the Great Pyramids, were done by groups who clearly revered these sites. Furthermore, regardless of this connection of tunnels, Jock and Samir have also realized, thanks to these contributory excavation efforts, something truly astonishing regarding not only the Bosnian pyramid, but the entire surrounding area, which, just like the pyramid, were long presumed to have been merely a natural geological landscape. However, all of the curious sites that have been found dotting the surrounding area were not only undeniably man-made, but that the entire landscape was actually once carved out by hand or possibly machine. With the river Fonica, which runs through the entire site, masterfully designed to permanently remain placid, also man-made, and due to the fossilized stonework found, enabling this water's manipulation, according to Jock, indicates it could have possibly been completed millions instead of thousands of years ago successfully creating a river which gently meanders through the site. Who built the Bosnian Plateau? Who had such tremendous earth-moving and water manipulation capabilities, seemingly many hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of years ago? As the investigations within the area continue, it is slowly growing into one of the most enormous, most compelling areas of evidence of ancient advanced lost civilization to be found anywhere on Earth. Thank you very much to Jock for bringing all this astonishing information to light, furthering all of our understandings of their past capabilities. And as the research grows, so does the compounding proof of these past highly capable civilizations. We will, of course, keep you posted through our connections, a place that is undoubtedly highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. Tibet, the roof of our world. Words do no justice to the untouched beauty of this far corner of Earth. A vast, mysterious and sacred place, embraced and protected by miles of immovable mountains. Monasteries, built many hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago, stand in defiance of the elements, precariously placed among the clouds. Many of these very ancient structures 
are said to have been built on the remnants of once even grander ancient buildings, structures many religions attribute to the gods. Among the seemingly endless mountain ranges lay one mountain which is different, one which is special. It is believed by most of Tibet, and even further afield, that the god Shiva lay buried within this sacred mountain. According to ancient beliefs, this enigmatic Tibetan mountain represents the axis of the world, the stairway to heaven. In many eastern countries, Mount Kailash is considered the holiest place on earth. Some ancient sources even suggesting it is where one could find the mysterious city of the gods. It is indeed regarded within the climbing world as unascendable. A route has never been located and probably never will. Few have been brave enough to even go near this place in the past century. There may be some profound reasoning behind these ancient clusters of human beings, regarding this particular mountain over all others as sacred and as the resting place of a god. There may, however, be ulterior motives at play when it comes to the discouragement of climbers in attempting the peak. A team of Russian scientists, intrigued by the history and a possible suppression of its true nature, have suggested after covert explorations that the top of Mount Kailash is not a natural formation. It is actually the remnants of a giant man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Just how old this pyramid could be currently remains unclear. What also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid, disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone." End quote. A mysterious claim put forward in regards to the mountain concerns rapid aging when in the area. After spending 12 hours in the region, the length of nails and hair was equal to two weeks of normal growth in some cases. Several mystics have said that the mountain has a secret entrance within it, leading to the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. Legend also states that when the ice on its peak finally melts, it will reveal the eye. Professor Ernst Muldashev, PhD, a doctor and explorer who traveled Tibet extensively, said later in his life, quote, There are two underground countries, the Shambhala and Agartha which are each part of the gene pool of humanity and civilization. Information provided by the Thule Society shows there is a higher civilization coming from the Himalayas and divided into two branches, the Shambhala and Agartha, the former being the center of power protected by unknown forces and energy." End quote. An understanding of what sort of pyramid Kailash could be, or indeed just how special it is, may take several years to establish. I will, of course, keep you posted. Pangbochi is a tiny, isolated village high up within the mountains of Nepal. Resting at an altitude of 13,000 feet, it is located deep within the Himalayas. This tiny place is renowned for producing world-class Sherpas and is mostly inhabited by the Sangder Sherpa. Many putting this phenomena down to the extremely inhospitable climates that people from the village are exposed to from a very young age. It is also the home of an ancient monastery whose resident monks seem at home, completely isolated from the rest of mankind, above the clouds, on top of the mountains. Countless lost and extremely lucky souls have been lured to this place during the vicious blizzards which consumed the mountains, saved only by the sound of the monks' ceremonial horns. If the Yeti does indeed exist, then these surrounding mountain ranges, all but forgotten by the outside world, would undoubtedly be a suitable home for extremely elusive beasts. And if a population of human beings were ever to encounter such an animal, it would have to be the monks of such monasteries dotted within these inhospitable and completely isolated mountain ranges. Once one discovers that the majority of such populations not only believe in such creatures, but often claim to have witnessed them, 
the events that follow become all the more of an intriguing reality. Not only do some of these groups of devout and very long-running lines of monks claim to have seen them, but many stories are attached to such events. Some, the Pangbochi Monastery in particular, actually claim to be in possession of the physical remains of this creature. Peter Byrne, funded by an extremely wealthy oil tycoon by the name of Tom Slick, would find these remains high within the mountains that the monks had kept with them for many years as a ritual artifact, a part of their ceremonies day by day. Known as the Pangbochi Hand, Byrne had no idea what to expect. Imagine his surprise when the monks produced what appeared to be an authentic yeti's hand and a complete scalp. According to the monks, many years prior, one of their brothers had walked into a cave to meditate. There, he saw a yeti. He returned many years later to find that the yeti was dead. He collected a hand and the scalp and took it back to the monastery where it remained. Astounded by the artifacts, Byrne requested they let him take them away for further study. Unfortunately, the monks refused, claiming the remains were too highly valued by the monastery. Unperturbed and determined to come away from there with some sort of hard evidence, in a shocking move, Peter Burns stole sections of the hand bone from the monks, replacing them with human bone. Byrne then smuggled the bones out of Nepal and into India, where actor James Stewart allegedly smuggled the hand bones out of the country in his luggage to England. Once at the London University, primatologist William Charles Osman Hill conducted a physical examination of the pieces that Byrne supplied. His first findings were that it was a hominid, and later, in 1960, he decided that the Pangbochi fragments were a closer match to a Neanderthal, but not an exact match. In 1991, in conjunction with Lauren Coleman's research, it was discovered that the Slick Expedition consultant an American anthropologist by the name of George Agagino had retained other samples of the Pangbochi hand kept from the original theft. The NBC program Unsolved Mysteries obtained samples and determined they were similar to human tissue, but were not human, and could only verify they were near human. Shortly thereafter, most likely due to confirmation via forensic testing of the artifact's authenticity, the entire hand and scalp was stolen from the Pangbachi Monastery in a military precision-style operation. Rumors regarding the items reportedly disappearing into a private collection via the illegal underground in the sale of antiquities would circulate, yet they have never been seen again. George Agagino, before his death on September 11, 2000, transferred his secret research upon the Pangbachi Yeti hand to Lauren Coleman. In 2010, Weta Workshops, who did the models for the Lord of the Rings movies, kindly produced a replica skull and hand based on photos of the missing hand and skull. Mike Alsop handed over the replica skull and hand to monks at Pangbochi in May 2011. They seem to be very pleased to have their artifacts back. Let's just hope no one tells them. Our conjecture that there is a lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization could be proven beyond doubt by one continent in particular. Antarctica, for many millennia, this land has been encased, perfectly preserved, laying beneath miles of ancient ice. The Piri Rees map, something which we have discussed in the past, has long been argued to prove just that long claimed as showing that of the landmass of Antarctica free of ice. If true, it would have been impossible to have created, according to modern paradigm, thought to have originated from the embers of the great fire of Alexandria, this catastrophe a tragic loss to man's understanding of our own origins. Yet this map survived, clearly displaying what many believe to be the continent of Antarctica before becoming what is now a frozen ice cap at the pole of our planet. It is now an incredibly inhospitable place, one of the reasons we feel there may be intact, undisturbed ruins which may dot the land, known to be the driest place on Earth, and in addition to this compelling possibility of submerged yet highly advanced ruins, 
there may be many other unexplained anomalies that, due to their incredibly remote geographical placement, across some of the world's now most impenetrable natural obstacles, recording some of the lowest temperatures on Earth, if proven beyond doubt to exist, would be proof of a preserved pre-Ice Age existence for advanced man. Yet due to this immense cold, and the fact that it is a largely unexplored tundra capable of killing even the most experienced of explorers, many things which rest here remain unexplored. Yet just like that of the face of the moon, one must ask the question, just what could be laying there? buried within or resting upon this giant ice sheet many miles deep. Objects just like the anomalies discovered in Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947, which, although strongly argued by officials as that of a United States Army Air Force's balloon which crashed at tremendous velocity at a ranch near Roswell, which many claim was in fact a UFO which crashed would inevitably be covered up by whatever power was capable of not only visiting such anomaly, but retrieving it. Crashing into the seemingly endless tundra, and our next item of interest could behold just as controversial in origin as that of the causation for what many claim as the Roswell Conspiracy, a truth so controversial only top military personnel would be privy to. This remarkable image taken by satellite clearly displays an as yet unexplored anomaly. Resting at the basin of a hilltop, it presumably crashed into, with its velocity upon impact sliding the mysterious object down the side of the mountain. When other such objects have been discovered in the past, indeed in the same way as that of amateur sleuths, poring over satellite images looking for these exact features, Military vehicles have been later snapped at these same locations, unquestionable proof of the world's government's interest in such discoveries, not only due to the environment, but also its remoteness. Found in permanently frozen areas could mean that if such objects do indeed turn out to be that of an alien craft, could also be in a condition to be successfully reversed engineered if not repaired by man. A technological explosion would inevitably occur, a lucrative operation indeed. So we find it curious that several such events have been claimed to have occurred since 1947. Could this also be posited to be as a result of this exact claim scenario? Discovered, retrieved, reverse engineered, and finally either adapted for military purpose or commercial profits. What is this thing laying far away in the frozen Antarctic? Is it indeed a crashed alien vehicle? We find the anomaly highly compelling. In July 2012, a curious Google Earth image was discovered by Russian UFO researcher Valentin de Tari. The image quickly made its way around the media, with varying reactions. Andrew Fleming from the British Antarctic Survey told the UK newspaper The Mail Online that the object was clearly a simple crevasse in the ground. They can be tens of meters deep, nothing unusual, it's certainly not a UFO. Well it seems he may be right, however, an image purporting to be from the same site taken one year earlier has been uncovered. Researchers looking at previous satellite images of the same site taken in April and December 2011 found what appeared to be four massive vehicles parked in the snow, pointed towards a mysterious object. There appears to be more than a simple crevasse going on in this image. What appears to be going on is that a huge scientific research center has been deployed to a meaningless location in an icy desert. Which just so happens to be by an object and strange feature in the ice, that looks all for the world like a crashed aircraft pattern, only for it to completely vanish a year later. What should we make of these earlier satellite images? While some reports identify the shapes as tanks, if they really are vehicles, they're massive in size, probably around 70 feet in length. There are no tire tracks, but they could have been covered by snow or blown away. They look more like research centers, also note the drift patterning around them towards the object, is this camouflage canvas, why are all the drifts in the same direction and none on the other side of the vehicles? Is it a crashed alien craft? If it was, I would have definitely filled in the hole afterwards, 